Today is the 20th of June, and I just had a very interesting conversation with my husband that I want to document and remember here because it started off as a really scary confrontation that he was angry, he was defensive, he was frustrated, he didn't want to listen, he was very, he felt very attacked when I was trying to approach him with a concept that I was hoping to coach him on or teach him on. I thought I heard him. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what happened and then I'm going to, I'm going to explain what happened after that. He made me my iced coffee this morning. I ran out of creamer and so I was going to go to the store and buy more creamer but he didn't think I needed to do that because we have half and half and I said half and half isn't sweet and he's all I can make it sweet so he's making me my coffee and he doesn't drink coffee and he makes it for me and it's such a sweet gesture that he always does and I always appreciate it when he does it um and he had me taste it and it wasn't the best. It wasn't as sweet as I like it, but I said, I'll deal with it. And he's like, I use stevia. And I'm like, oh, okay, go ahead and add more stevia then. Cause then it won't feel like I'm downing a bunch of sugar green meals. I don't know. It's just, it's probably healthier than creamer, but you understand what I'm saying. It's just, I was, I was willing to live with it, but then when he brought it back, I took a drink. I took a sip just to test it, right? And I said, Ooh, that's fun. And he started laughing. And we had this moment of exchange where we're laughing about me reacting to his coffee that he made for me and his, his sweetener that he did. And he starts chuckling and I'm like, what? He says, <laughs> just the way you said it mm, fun it's not your typical it's not your typical reaction so I understood why he was laughing and I understood why I was laughing and why he was laughing and we we're just enjoying that moment for just a second and then I'm like what about it and he's like nothing and in that moment I recognized that I really wanted a compliment from him we he was like almost there like he was like he was chuckling laughing he had a reaction to something I was doing or saying and he could have said something like oh you're so cute or I like the way you describe things or you've you're so adorable I don't know I don't know what he could have said I didn't have a specific thing in my head on what I was hoping he would say. It wasn't an expectation. It just felt like he was, it felt like he was reaching me pleasurably in an emotional way. We were connecting in an emotional way, but then he fell flat. He fell flat and he didn't finish it off with a positive opinion. Because you got negative opinions and you've got positive opinions. And another way you can say it is you have complaints and you have compliments. And when you have a negative opinion or a complaint about someone for 15 years and everything they do or say or don't do or don't say, like I have 15 years of built up comments that he has said to me repetitively or maybe just once or twice, but the gym in my head has said so many negative opinions and complaints about me that they are crowding my brain to the point where I'm just desperate for a positive opinion. I'm desperate for a compliment. I am so desperate from it from, from him that because he's not willing to give it and he's not able to give it, 
I shut down around him. I don't want to be around him. I feel completely triggered. I feel like all he's going to do is give me something negative and I don't want to be around him. So I'm in this room, right? And I'm trying to learn who I am and I'm trying to discover my emotional awareness and an emotional IQ. And I recognize in that moment that he was just about there. He, he gave me that emotional connection I had been longing for by laughing and giggling about the way I said, mm hmm, fun. We were so like connected in that moment. And then pff, am I expecting too much of him? Maybe. I mean, that's not, that's not to hear to say, but when you've been had, when you've had negative opinions for so long, all you want is a positive opinion. You know, all you want is just one little positive opinion. He goes, well, I don't need a positive opinion. Uh, we had a good moment. Why are you trying to ruin it? Why are you trying to, why are you trying to make it? Why are you trying to have expectations of what I'm supposed to say? And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not understanding. You're not understanding. And it took me quite a while to explain even just this much. And by the time I got done explaining it, he was finally humble, but he was so, so emotionally upset and defensive and felt like he was being attacked. And I'm just like, that's not what I'm trying to do. Please, 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 please. And the way I had to do it, the way I had to communicate to him about what I was trying to say to him was, I understand he's on the autistic spectrum. I understand that emotional intelligence is not easy for him. I understand that he grew up developing his tough guy attitude with the people around him and the, you know, because he grew up in South Phoenix and he had this attitude like he was have you know like he had to come up with his negative comments and his negative opinion and his negative comebacks at the drop of the hat because that's the development that he had as a child people didn't help develop him in a positive way they helped develop his net his environment helped develop him in a negative way so he's got this born identity type of um reaction to everything we go into a public place and he puts his back up against the wall so that he can get a good sense of what's going on around him he's always got his knife in his pocket in case somebody tries to you know rob him or something like his functioning his way of functioning is very rigid and very strict because of his development and the way he understands the world but he never understood the world in a positive way in a compliment way in a in a positive opinion way not not to this extent that you know a, a typical person would have had with with positive love in their family with positive friends with positive um workplace people you know he he uh he had to learn how to adapt to his environment and it's still very much on the negative side of the spectrum very rigid thinking very angry so i had to explain it to him that hey i understand that your emotional iq is developed mainly for this type of environment but the compliments and the connection to people and the emotional intelligence and stuff is not quite where you'd like it to be and this is where i'm just trying to help but if you're not open to that i'm totally i'm totally fine with accepting that you're not open to learning that i can't coach you i'm gonna have to just uh, I'm just going to have to let you discover your own emotional intelligence. But if you're open to it, I can, I can tell you more about what I mean about this. And in, in some point he says, Alexa, stop. At some point he said, um, are you, are you kidding me? Why do I have to go the extra hundred miles? So even in that, he understood that, giving someone a positive opinion after having a nice exchange of happy, you know, cheerful, um, laughing. He knew that he had, he knew that it would be a little extra, f a few steps just to finish out a thought. I think I'm like not explaining this very well, but the way I explained it to him, and I'll just try to reiterate it is if his emotional, um, vibration of emotional intelligence is really high for negative situations and being tough guy and being um, negative opinion and negative, you know, complaints and negative ready to fight all the time. If that's really high, but his emotional intelligence with positive things is really low, then, you know, it's going to take, it's going to take some training to get some um, development, you know, practices and stuff and, and 
changing the way you're approaching life and changing the way you're thinking and changing the way you're talking to people to get your emo emo emotional intelligence up a little higher. You have to be emotionally aware of what is going on. And I just told him, I challenge you. I challenge you to take a look at the way you talk to people, your your kids and your coworkers and me. And are you finishing off thoughts with a positive opinion? It's not enough to just be positive sometimes. Sometimes people want a positive opinion because there's so many negative opinions being thrown about out there. How many of us are saying, you're just so great. You're so awesome. I really love how smart you are, or I really love your talent. You don't, if you don't get put a positive opinion, because opinions aren't facts, but people love hearing positive opinions. And if you don't have a marriage that you honor with positive opinions, and you're always throwing negative opinions out there, she's going to shut down. She's going to clam up. She's going to make a checklist miles, miles, miles long about how many negative things there are with me. But if you don't, if you don't give her compliments once in a while, and I'm not talking about just in the bedroom, I'm talking about, <clears throat> you know, every, every place, not every moment, every moment. Can you finish off that positive moment with a positive opinion? <clears throat> and I've struggled with this for him for years. So this is not something new that's just come up. So then he gives me an analogy in return and the way he says it and the way he understands it is, okay, this is how I see it. Let's pretend for a second that you gave me a blowjob, but I didn't finish and we didn't have sex and a week later or whatever, nothing else has happened. And I say something to the effect as you never please me sexually. And you would be like, oh, what about that one time last week when I gave you a blowjob? Wouldn't you be upset that the positive moment that we had with that blowjob is not enough? It's not good enough. It needed more. And, you know, because as a man, you don't want just a blowjob when you can't finish. You probably want to finish, right? And he's explaining to me that I should just be grateful for the, for the moment that we had, just like he should be grateful for the blowjob and not hear about complaining about how I never have, you know, um, sexual pleasure from you, you know, if, so that was the way he understood that I was trying to say, and I go, hold on, hold on, hold on. I understand what you're trying to say, but I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. And I'll use your analogy against it. If all I ever did was have positive sexual moments with you but you never came by the time you're done with the week or the month or the year if you've never had a, a, a finishing experience um, you would be pretty disheartening and disgruntled and upset that yeah we have a lot of good positive moments but uh, finish it off already finish me. And he's like, Oh, I was like, I'm not saying that we don't have positive moments. I'm saying that you are like absolutely zilt nothing when it comes to positive opinions. We, we, if I cook a meal, you might say, Oh, this is, this is really good. Oh, okay. Thanks. And then if I, you know, please them in bed. Oh, that felt really good. He always talks about um, him, but he never gives me the positive opinion. And he always gives me the negative. You are stupid or you are a cunt or you are a bitch or you are a nag or you are impossible or you are crazy. Or I don't, I'm not saying he says all those things regularly, but he has said them before and they've built, they've built up space in my head. If he really wants to balance out this relationship, he can say, you are thoughtful to have made dinner or you are so loving to and I appreciate you you know pleasing me in the bedroom um you are cute when you say that the coffee is fun you are determined you are loyal you are awesome you are special you are amazing like giving compliments to someone doesn't have to define them and and, and if you're in a relationship you are committed to 
building each other up, not tearing each other down. And that's what I want. I want the commitment that we can build each other up. Another analogy that I gave him, just real quick, and then I'll let y'all go, is I, I tried to explain it to him like, all right, if you're a football fan and all football season long, you're riding high on this vibration of loving this play and loving this player and loving, and loving this call that the referee made and, and loving the score and loving all the fans and you go and, and you go and you enjoy yourself at the game and you're like yeah if, if you're if your emotional vibration levels are not low as a non-fan and they're not and they're not medium as a medium fan if you are in love with this football thing you are going to be riding high and being extremely emotional about this football game and everything that happens and if you look over at me and you're like oh look, look at that look, check, check this out and I'm like yeah whatever dude right You'll be like, forget it. You're not interested. You're not interested in the football thing. But I'm talking about emotional connection as a married couple. As a married couple, you want an emotional connection on a, at a high level or at least a medium level. You don't want someone completely disinterested in you to the point where you're like, you keep falling flat on me, dude. Why, why are you like enjoying a good moment, but then nothing? You don't compliment. You don't say. You don't give me a positive opinion. You don't say anything. You're just like, <laughs> the way you said fun. What about the way I said fun? What about it? The way you said fun. Why are you trying to get me something else? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so if you had season ticket passes to the football game um, where you get to be in the best seats possible, you get them for free. Heck, that'd be awesome, right? Or maybe you spend a ton of money on them. Would you want to bring someone that's going to look at their phone the whole time? Or would you want to bring someone that's going to be on their emotional vibe with you? If you're going to invest money for two tickets to go to this game every week or however long, how many times they play a week, a month. If you go as often and you're enjoying yourself in a positive high vibration, you don't want to sit next to someone that's going to be in disinterested. That's going to be flat. That's going to be not enjoying this positive vibration with you. I am on a positive high and I get it. My husband's not any, anywhere close to being that. I'm on a positive high because I'm learning my emotional intelligence. I'm learning who I am. I'm learning what my truth is. I'm learning how awesome I am. I'm learning that I'm cute. I knew I was cute. I knew I was cute when I said it. I knew I was cute after I said it. I didn't need to hear that from him, but I'm bringing him along with me on this ride of life like somebody would bring you to a football game. And if you're going to honor the person that's bringing you along in this marriage, don't look at your phone the whole time. Don't fall flat. Don't start a blowjob and not finish it off. Like, be engaged. Be engaged to the point. And when Crystal says what that looks like, that looks like you giving me a positive opinion. A positive opinion is how you can finish me off and make me completely satisfied. A positive opinion is how you can get off your dang phone and enjoy the game. Even if it's not at the highest vibration, it's it's better than being on your phone the whole time. Um, and, being, and being engaged in a relationship is like, it's fulfilling for both of you. That is my soapbox. That is where I'm at. June 20th, 2020. We are kicking this into high gear. Talk to y'all later. Love ya. Bye-bye.